This video will be different from the normal sustainable life related videos from Eco Snooky. How many solar panels does my house need? How much rooftop space is required? And what ratings of inverter and batteries are required? Today we are trying to solve these questions, which were asked by many of our subscribers. We can find the answers to these questions by doing some simple calculations. Note that these calculations are very basic ones for easy understanding. But before answering these questions, we should select which type of solar PV system we want to install in our house. There are three main types of solar PV systems available. On-grid, off-grid and hybrid system. The on-grid or grid-tie solar systems are by far the most common and widely used by homes and businesses. These systems do not need batteries and use either solar inverters or micro-inverters and are connected to the public electricity grid. Solar power that you generate is exported to the electricity grid and you usually get paid a feed-in tariff or credits for the energy you export. Next type is off-grid system or standalone system. An off-grid system is not connected to the electricity grid and therefore requires battery storage. And the final one, hybrid system. Modern hybrid systems combine solar and battery storage in one and are now available in many different forms and configurations. Due to the decreasing cost of battery storage, Systems that are already connected to the electricity grid can start taking advantage of battery storage as well. This means being able to store solar energy that is generated during the day and using it at night. Next, you have to decide which type is best for your house. For on-grid and hybrid system. The simple way of answering the question, how many solar panels can be installed and how much will be the return on investment, is to consult a professional solar installer who can give you a free home solar evaluation. But for a standalone or off-grid system, it is easy to obtain the idea of how many PV modules are required, the ratings of battery, inverter, charge controller, etc and the space required for the panels by doing some simple calculations. So, let us do this with an example. Initially, we need to calculate the electrical load which is going to be get connected to the PV system. Consider a small house and the following electrical appliances are to be connected to the PV system. For LED lamps of 40 watts each work 12 hours a day, two ceiling fans of 60 watts each work 8 hours a day, and a LED TV of 80 watts for 4 hours. Total load equals sum of all individual loads. That is 3,200 watt hours per day or 3.2 kilowatt hours per day. Now we can find out the rating of the inverter required for this load. For that, we need the total load in wattage. Earlier we multiplied load in wattage with time to get the total watt hours of load per day which is required after some time. But now we simply multiply the wattage of each appliance by the number of appliances. That is 360 watts. Now the capacity of the inverter should be 25% greater than the total load due to losses in the inverter. That is 360 watts multiplied by 1.25, which is 450 watts. So minimum 450 watts inverter is required. But it is always recommended to buy 800 watts inverter because you can easily add more PV panels into this inverter if the load increases in the future. 
Next, we can calculate the battery required. We can use this formula to find out the battery capacity required in ampere hours. We already calculated the watt hours per day used by appliances, which is 3,200 watt hour per day. Days of autonomy are the number of days where no power generation is possible due to clouds or rain, even though you continue to consume energy from the battery. Let's consider days of autonomy as one day. The efficiency of a normal battery is 85%, so it is given as 0.85 in the formula. 0.6 is the depth of discharge rate. You will never be able to take all the power from a battery. Each battery has a depth of discharge rate to prevent them to be damaged. Here 60% is taken for depth of discharge. 12 volts batteries are the most commonly used ones for home systems. So here we are considering 12 volts as the nominal battery voltage. So the required capacity of the battery in ampere hour equals 522.8 ampere hour. So we can choose a 12V 550 ampere hour battery for one day autonomy. Next, we can calculate the rating and number of solar panels required. For that, we can use the famous formula P equals V into I. In this situation, solar panels are distributing current to two areas. During the sunshine, the solar panel provides current to the directly connected load through the inverter and some current to the battery charging. So the formula P equals V into I will get changed to P equals V into I1 plus I2, where V is the voltage of the panel. Here we are using 12 volt panels. And I1 is the current required for the load connected to the panel, which can be obtained by using the formula P equals V into I, where P is the total load in wattage, which is 360 watts. And V equals 12 volts, which is the inverter voltage. Therefore, I1 equals 360 by 12, which is 30 ampere. I2 is the battery charging current, which can be obtained by dividing the battery size by the time required for charging. The ideal time required for charging is 10 hours because slow charging is good for better battery life. So I2 equals 55 amperes. We can put I1 and I2 into the main formula. So P equals 1020 watts. So approximately 1 kilowatt of solar panels are required for this house. The number of panels equals total power by power of panel available in the market. There are different wattage options for PV panels available. So here we can install six numbers of 180 watts panels or three numbers of 350 watts. Next, we can find out the rooftop area required for the panels. This can be obtained from the chart. You can choose any kind of PV cell material according to your budget. Monocrystalline is more costly but higher in efficiency so less space is required. So we have found out the ratings of the inverter, battery, solar panels and the area required for solar panels on the rooftop of a simple house. Please check the description below for the links to calculate the MPPT charge controllers required and the rating of wires, switches and circuit breakers. Hope this video helped you to understand the basic calculation to design a standalone solar PV system for your home.